So we have a very interesting company today uh, uh, presenting or talking, presenting itself, which is the Finnish Schools International. And so the reason I like this company very much is first of all, it, it participated in Exculture in the past. Then we took a little break and then now they're back. And so uh, what's interesting about this company is that it's not only an education company, but it's now at a juncture, juncture where it's kind of trying to explore some new directions. So originally the Finnish Schools International uh, was focused on sort of brick and mortar schools. So it would have been a, like a real school, um, you know, in a physical space. But now with pandemic, apparently the school thought about maybe experimenting with some online approaches. And so it's a very interesting top topic, very interesting approach, very timely. Um, all universities, all schools now have to do some online work. And so it seems to me that FSI may be now at the stage where they will completely reinvent the school. And so, um, for example, from what I've learned so far, I find that very promising because um, I know that many of the exculture students, for example, in the teenager track, they are children of expatriates and their parents hey. move. Their parents, Bas, yes. Bas, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yes. It's here with us also uh, Alestin, the founder well, of uh, FSI yeah, and CEO. Yeah, yeah, so so let's yeah. give him a, a greeting. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, I missed that. So uh, as I was saying, um, we had a few meetings with the Exculture students. Um, and so the teenagers, some of them are children of, for example, expatriates. And they, uh, they move from one city to another all the time. And so they actually said it would be nice to have a nice international school with a proper international program that is fully online. So every time my parents move to a new business assignment, we don't have to switch schools. So we basically stay in the same school. So I don't know if that's what you're trying to do, but it seems like you're definitely onto something here. And so we also have Alex Tindarisha, uh, one of our ex-culture professors, but also a founder of the uh, Finnish Schools International, uh, wh whom some of you may know, he participated in ex-culture in different capacities over the years. Uh, so, but anyway, let, let, let me stop here and ask you gentlemen, tell more about your program, about your school, about your company. And then students, if you have any questions, you can ask them as we go by typing them in the Q&A window, or feel free to raise your hand and maybe we'll add you and you can engage in the conversation directly. And uh, obviously I'm recording this meeting for those who cannot attend live, uh, they will watch it later. So please gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Vas. Uh, it's always great to be with Exculture. I was looking at my office, I have some, um, uh, I changed office uh, recently and it seems that my first Exculture certificate ah. is missing from, from, from here. I don't know, it should be somewhere. So next time I will, I, I had it in my wall from 2011. I think That's I was- what I wanted second. to ask. Yes, when did you join Exculture? And yes, it must have been the first year sometimes. So we- First year, the second batch. Yeah, the second year. So yes, absolutely. One of the oldest uh, sort of professor of <laughs> in the Indian culture project. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very proud about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to see uh, where Vas has taken X culture from. Uh, I remember uh, also, I didn't attend the first batch, I think, because it was, uh, I wasn't teaching in that semester. Uh, so I only taught in the what you would have this, I think, spring semester. Yeah. Uh, so, but I was very excited to see, you know, that, wow, you know, it was wonderful, but obviously uh, first, uh, first uh, batch, um, still, I think some 11 something universities, but not so much. But then, you know, to, to look at where it is today, it's incredible. And the lives that uh, this project has changed, that's, that's incredible, you know, thousands and thousands of students' lives. And this is, you know, uh, something extremely important. It's not just a project. It's yeah, not we just actually, a collaboration. Alison, we actually had the first wedding between the Exculture students last year. <laughs> so, uh, there was, uh, we, we didn't even know about that until after the wedding. But um, so we had a student from the United States and another one from Italy. So he's an Italian and she's American. And so they were on the same team in 2017. They started, you know, basically dating, I guess, you know, exchanging emails and then spending some, I don't know if they met face to face or not. But anyway, both of them were on a, uh, you know, did very well in Exculture. And so we invited both of them to the Exculture Symposium in Italy in 2018. And that's where he proposed and she accepted. And then they had a wedding later that year. And so they didn't invite us, but they told us about it after the fact. And so, and because both of them were majoring in, in IB, so they got both a job at, a, at the same company and now working somewhere in Pakistan with an international subsidiary. So I'm not sure if we already have Exculture kids, uh, you know, like real Exculture kids, 
but at least for two people, we literally changed lives, you know, at, at that level. So, <laughs> well, this is an incredible story. I didn't, I, I, I haven't heard about this, but definitely, definitely very, very interesting. And I'm sure uh, there will be, there will be more uh, stories like this, but I've also heard stories of, of people who met at X Culture and that they have done business together in the, you know, afterwards and that they had uh, that work together. They created business partnerships once they, uh, uh, got into the uh, uh, basically into the industry and started working. So, uh, to all of you listening, it's absolutely wonderful uh, project. And uh, you know, if I was a student like you once again, I would really be so excited to to doing my best. Now, um, uh, first, uh, as 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 Vast Vast done a very very good introduction of the FSI. Uh, we launched it in 2017 with the idea to really disrupt the, the K-12 education with a new uh, model, uh, which would be much more experimental and futuristic, but at the same time with proven results from the Finnish education system. And uh, we have launched our first school in Pristina, very successful. Uh, I will uh, show you, uh, maybe if I could share this. The video. You can share the video. I, I have it here in case you don't. Yeah, and I think I made you co-host, so you should be able. Uh -huh. No, no. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it should, you should be able to show. Yeah, uh, to show the video. And uh, just a quick question. So this first school, it was a uh, like a a building, right? A brick and mortar school, right? Brick and mortar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you have the video or slides, you should be able to share them. Okay. Would be interesting to see. How big is it now? How many students? And I'm not sure how much this whole COVID situation messed it up. But uh, uh, it's uh, 175 students mm -hmm. in the third year. Obviously, COVID has, uh, you know, uh, done. It's it's uh, it's. Uh, but we we were we're still growing. Even during the COVID, we we grew a little. We grew a little bit. We got license to operate in Albania, but because of the of the situation, we didn't want to do it. And then uh, uh, when COVID came, uh, that's where we, I would say we shined. We shined because it was from the very beginning, we have heavily invested in technology. We are strong believers of technology as an enabler, enabler of, of good education, not technology for the sake of technology, but obviously technology to improve the pedagogy and to improve the student outcomes. And so it took us only two days to provide uh, a fully online uh, learning experience. And we got 4.93 rating out of five from parents uh, during this uh, three and a half, four months uh, period, which uh, obviously uh, during this time, you know, uh, for me, crises are always opportunities, you know, uh, and we thought that this would be a, a wonderful opportunity for us to, uh, you know, to create new things rather than just, um, you know, um, uh, emphasize the challenges because there are challenges. We have all seen those, but I believe COVID is one of the best things that has happened to education world in maybe a hundred years. Uh, short term, short term, it has damaged yeah. a little bit, obviously, you know, I wouldn't say that every school around the world has done tremendous job online. I wouldn't say that every university, every professor has done tremendous job, but in long run, I think it, it has a, a, a wonderful positive uh, impact in the education because it put us out of our comfort zone and it, it, it uh, made us think of new um, ways of delivering education in a, and, and when you go out of comfort zone, then you are creative. And, then, and that's what we have seen. You know, we have, for example, we, I have uh, been involved in training public school teachers in the Balkans, and we have trained around 2000 public school teachers. And of course, around 50% of them, they had never used any technology before not just online class. They never used even a computer to prepare for their lesson. 
That's exactly, I mean, you cannot believe how much it drove me crazy before COVID because, you know, in Exculture, we are all about online. So we have online lectures, we have online, you know, systems, same thing with businesses. And sometimes you are trying to connect with the person in Zoom and they're like, what is Zoom? Or sometimes you're saying, well, just record the lecture. And they say, what do you mean? How would you record it? Like, how does it work? Well, now at least everybody knows how, right? Exactly. <laughs> it did not work for everyone, but at least everybody had to learn the technology. So Absolutely. So everybody has started to learn the technology. And then those who had, there were so many teachers, so creative, you know, they were already being very creative. You know, of course, the 50% were not so creative, but the other 50% you would find in there so many creative voices that, that it was incredible what they have done for such a short period of time. So because of that, we decided to, to start exploring the idea of doing a global online school, uh, which would, as we say, would deliver world-class education at an affordable price uh, at three different time zones in a flexible uh, education mode. We launched it in mm -hmm. August. Uh, I would say soft launch. We just wanted to test the grounds and we wanted to do a, a small pilot. And we had tremendous interest, uh, even for those, I think we had 11 days only to, to basically enroll students. We enrolled around 30 students. Um, and we opened the, as, 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 as Carlos would say, digital doors in September 2020 with those students only in the middle school at the moment, seven to nine grades, uh, not above or below. Obviously the plan is to now go from September uh, full uh, scale from uh, uh, kindergarten to, uh, to 12th grade, well, to 10th grade and then, you know, 11 and, and, and 12th grade. And then the challenges, you know, we, we know the challenges of, of, of education. And these are the, the, the challenges we're trying to solve. You know, first of all, you know, we're living in the fourth industrial revolution, but as we talked also in the past, most of our schools are still designed for the first industrial revolution. And then uh, there's not much personalization in education still. And with what we're trying to do is we're really trying to personalize the education for kids. Uh, if you look at the online provisions, mostly are very local approaches and we wanted to provide a truly global learning experience uh, supported by world-class teachers and 24 seven student support. This is also quite important. So 24 seven student support means that anytime you want to learn and you having, I don't know, a challenge with an assignment or with a project or whatever, there is somebody on the line on the other side of the computer that would be able to help you with your assignment or with your learning or this is in addition to your teachers you know your regular uh, teachers that that you would have and the um, pandemics was was good for people to try but what has happened during pandemics is that all the schools went traditional you know whatever they did at the school they wanted to do they wanted to do online and this is not the way you know online has a very different pedagogy as as Vas knows very well, uh, being involved in this for, for many, many years. So this is where we, we're trying to, to, re, to resolve. And uh, basically we wanted to break the paradigms in, in education. Uh, our uh, model is very flexible. Uh, you can enroll anytime, you can drop out anytime, you pay as you go, uh, you know, flexible. Um, and you would work in global teams, you know, you would, you would work maybe in your time zone, but you would have a project with uh, students in a, another time zone, which is something that X culture does very, very, very well. And I think this is kind of an inspiration. Bas? It seems to me, Alishin, that there are two more big benefits uh, to what you're trying to do. One, we already said that, uh, for example, even in, in X culture, we have a lot of kids uh, of expatriate families families that move um, every half a year, every year from one city to another. And so having a global, uh, you know, like world-class school all online, they can go to that school and it doesn't matter where they are at the time when they take the lecture. But another benefit, it seems to me also that you can have your teachers wherever you want. Exactly. So that you can hire the best of the best talent. And if that teacher happens to be not in your country, but let's say in Helsinki, Finland, or maybe in New York City, so the teacher can be anywhere you want. 
And so this way you can really attract the best talent uh, without disrupting their life and having to relocate to what, whatever location it is, right? Absolutely, Vas, absolutely. Because, you know, we opened our first school in, in Pristina, Kosovo. You know, it's not the most lucrative place on earth, you know. It's not that, you know, well, teachers will, will die to come here, you know, will say, wow, you know, we're crazy about it. So we really want to go there and teach. But with a global online school, it's exactly. We have already attracted some what we call rock star teachers, some teachers very famous that have done incredible things uh, in their careers because we want those teachers, not because of their name, but because they could inspire other teachers exactly. uh, in the team and they could inspire our students to really go beyond uh, just a, a basic education. Always having the students uh, at the center of everything that, that we do and creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurial lifestyle. So uh, not just a traditional school focusing on what you would have, language arts, math, and sciences, but a whole child approach inspired by the Finnish approach to learning, which focuses uh, sometimes even more on those, what we might call today the periphery, you know, mm -hmm. the arts and creativity and home economics and coding and uh, entrepreneurship uh, as much as in, in the core. And our vision is to go to 3,000 students uh, in three years. Um, initially, we're talking about the, uh, uh, the direct B2C, if I could say, uh, as, a, as a business model here. So directly catering to those students. But we want to develop in the next uh, five years in different stages. So we want to provide direct education to students live, online, anywhere, anywhere in the world. And this is one thing you mentioned very, uh, very important. You know, you, you, you could live in a, in a remote area because of your parents' uh, work or because of where you live. And you don't have always access to very good school uh, you know around the corner and this is where we come in i think we're we're, we're providing a world-class education with very good world-class teachers at an affordable price you know at your doorstep or at your computer screen um in this case uh so we want to do that again the second yes yeah if i may so one thing that we discovered in exculture that we completely did not expect and i think you may be a perfect solution for them so it turns out out of those uh, thousands of people who apply to Exculture, almost a half of them, I didn't even know that there are so many people like that in the world, but it turns out there are uh, the kids who are homeschooled. And so for some of them, it may be, you know, like maybe a medical condition force forces them to stay home. They cannot go to a regular school, simply, you know, just physically impossible. But then many of them, turns out they're very, very talented kids and they're so good that whatever local school is available where they live, it's just too slow for them. And so the parents figured instead of sending them to a school where they will be bored all the time, let's just do homeschooling, let them take classes online somewhere. And so I spoke to some parents and they expressed their frustration because it takes a lot of time to manage the program for a kid who stays at home. You have to select the courses you have, like it, it's complicated. And so it seems to me if they had a school like yours, you know, world-class education all online, and it doesn't matter where you are, you don't have to drive to that school. It seems like it would be a very good solution for those families with very talented kids who do not have a proper caliber school in the location where they live. So it seems to me FSI would be very popular among those kids and especially in the United States and the Western world, for some reason, this homeschooling is very popular. And so I didn't even know that there are so many kids, you know, studying from home. And the reason is because they don't have something like FSI in the location where they live. Exactly. Uh, and we, uh, there's a, a lot of students uh, around, around the world that are being homeschooled today and which uh, would be very interested to basically have a proper education. I had a, I had a very nice uh, call the other day with a, with a Finnish lady who's homeschooling her son and uh, for three years. She was absolutely an expert on online learning, you know, because of her experience. She knew everything, the ins and outs, but she was so tired of basically arranging everything exactly. you know, uh, for, for her child. And when she saw what we're trying to do, she was so like over the moon that, you know, uh, exactly. there will be a full package offered uh, uh, to, 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 her, to, her son, uh, to her son in this case. In the second stage, we want to start the, uh, by providing opportunities um, uh, to local entrepreneurs 
around the world who would want to build small hubs in their community and then work with us as the uh, education provider. So then you would have a hub, let's say in your hometown, a small hub where the kids would come and spend the day with, with, with a local tutor, but the full education would be delivered online on distance from world-class teachers. So then they would have the best of two worlds. They would have the socialization, they would have maybe the peer-to-peer -peer support there, but they will still be taught from really good teachers, uh, really good curriculum and, and full learning experience, um, again, with a relatively uh, low price. So for we realized that, you know, instead of going with opening up brick and mortar, uh, relatively premium schools, which only a certain, um, I would say, people would be able to afford them, we wanted to actually provide a world-class education uh, at much affordable price uh, to people around the world that they can, you know, they can uh, afford. And this is uh, why we shifted now with, it, with FSI Go, much more with FSI Go rather than with FSI brick and mortar schools, because we see an opportunity now to really expand and provide world-class education and solve uh, problems around the world in a much faster and a much more affordable way. Alexin, again, this kind of, I'm, I'm surprised how much it echoes what we are going through in Exculture. So as you know, Exculture is fully online. And so uh, we never thought that the kids would be meeting face to face. Turns out that every semester we have multiple kids from some of the same cities. Like for example, we would have like usually about a dozen kid from, kids like for example, from New Delhi or from Johannesburg. And so what they started doing on their own accord, they started forming local clubs and they actually do meet face to face. Like we would have a webinar and then all of a sudden I see several students in one room. I'm like, that's strange. I mean, aren't you guys all? And they say, oh no, no, we're in the same city. So we just today met at, at the house of this student. And so this way they, they actually form kind of stronger friendship bonds. Exactly. So they, they go to different schools they would have never met otherwise. But just like you said, so the education goes online, but they do have that social element by, in our case, they didn't even, you know, have like a small house, as you say, they just meet at somebody's house. Like, you know, like today we, we are doing a culture webinar from my home and tomorrow I'm from your home. And so I will not be surprised if you will see the same tendency and you will have those kind of local chapters, if you will, or clubs or whatever you want to call it, where the kids will have that social contact. So while taking classes online, they will still have that, you know, that, that social component in face-to-face -face format. Absolutely. 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 This is, this Absolutely. Is the... and, and then let, let, let me, let me, Alesh, in that we suggest because, because it's, it's interesting to see some things in, in, uh, already in place. So let me, let me share with you the, the video of the, of the current uh, uh, Pristina school. So do, do you have it? Uh, because I have it here ready. Uh, okay. because, because I want to show you uh, uh, and that you feel, let's uh, feel the, the, the kind of experience that, uh, that we are, uh, are are aiming to reproduce also in the in the in the online learning environments. Uh, that is very pre pretty pretty important. So I guess that you are seeing right now my my screen. Yep, yep, it's on. Yep. Okay, okay. So so uh, let's say have a sneak peek on uh, FSI uh, Pristina. So that's your actual school now that we will see, right? Yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and just let me highlight that. Uh, 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 a couple of years ago, uh, when 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 FSI was here in in X culture, this was uh, this this didn't didn't exist. Yeah. So this this is uh, uh, in part the result of uh, the participation and the insights that uh, uh, students that like you uh, made a couple of years ago. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of impact that 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 you can have and the kind of insights that you can uh, can have. So let's take a quick look on the on the on the video. Local media in Kosovo did this. Model global. 
تبع زوارنا إنوفاتسون أكي من درتو شكولن بس عارنس أكي من درتو شكولن تسيلن تعشوين بس ديت بس ميتا تنزة بيترا مغاندة تندرشنا ورشار عليشت Ne e kemi bërë këtë vjetë ose pas me të përnizë e vjetë ma herët se të gjithë. E kemi ndërë tu në shkollë të vazuar në në shkallësi e shekullit njësë të një. Mensi, wow, that's <laughs> you have a very beautiful building. I mean, my kids' schools would look very inferior to yours. <laughs> wow, that's I didn't this realize that's such a beautiful building. There was a local media, they did a, a kind of they wanted to come when, when we launched the school and we went on Forbes. So, Forbes uh, had an article about uh, and then they were like so impressed that they wanted to come in and see the school and have a kind of a small, small interview with me. and they did this, so it, it's not a, it's not very professional video, I, I would say, but it's still, I, I it's, yeah, you, you could tell that the building is beautiful, the technology is there, so very nice. But, then, but let me highlight, yeah. Abbas, that, that, that uh, there, at that time there was a, uh, let's say, a, a big test, a challenging test, and it was, uh, are we able to uh, tra uh, translate, to, to transfer, best practices and the kind of environment of, uh, uh, let's say, one of the most important and uh, unrecognized uh, educational models like a uh, Finnish model to an emerging country. And uh, well, you have seen the proof that uh, it, it is possible and, and, and it was set in place and it was a huge acceptance by people. So now the challenge, and this is the challenge in which we are inviting you guys, is uh, we want to make this thing go global and go global in, uh, in, in the digital uh, uh, setting that, uh, that is now uh, the challenge that, that we, are, we want to face. We now have the need and the opportunity to scale up this kind of concept and being able to say many, peoples in many, many people in many countries, many families, many children that, that have been left behind during these uh, pandemic times uh, that, well, we can, we can be here uh, to provide you uh, an outstanding uh, education experience. That's the challenge. So that's why uh, I think that uh, 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 you, Bas, in your introduction, uh, put it very, very, very well. And uh, we have discussed that a lot of with with the at the uh, in in these first stages, we were thinking about in a, in a, let's say brick and mortar expansion model, uh, uh, growing and having schools like uh, the one that you uh, you you saw in different uh, countries, little by little, a uh, uh, year by year. But now this, this COVID situation uh, uh, determined, let's say, a pivot, a pivot point for the business model. So, so we will say, uh, well, probably the, 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 the big expansion for FSI uh, is uh, putting first the global online school and then moving on the hubs and the brick and mortar schools like, like Alashin have, uh, have told you. So this is right now the challenge that uh, we are setting up and we want to put you to be part on, on the, let's say, uh, uh, answering many questions that obviously emerge at this time. Alistair, go ahead. Sure. Thank you, uh, Carlos, e exactly. So just to, to, to talk a little bit about the education pillars and the model as, as we call, uh, we start from a state-of-the-art curriculum which encompasses the seven transversal competencies of the Finnish uh, curriculum, uh, which at the core is development developing as a human being and as a good citizen um, and then but you can also follow uh, uh, American or British curriculum depending on which one is closer to you both of them accredited curriculums uh, however the seven transversal competences would be at the, at the top because for us this is very important you know you you have yes 
we understand that in the current education system, there are things that you have to be uh, traditional because, you know, uh, in order to be accredited, in order to be accepted, in order to be recognized. But then there are things that you have to be world class and that you have to be, you know, uh, uh, focus on the 21st century and not in the 19th century. And the seven transversal competences is exactly that. Then we start with every kid. Uh, we have developed what Carlos would, would call it a, uh, a student learning journey and a family uh, a journey. We have mapped the journey and, in, in, and it starts when you, before you come, we do uh, some uh, assessments, not, you know, just to, 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 to understand the, the child uh, from the cognitive abilities as well as from the, the previous learning and to create the individual learning plan. So, ask you more about that. so th there is a question from Rabia Hanif. Uh, so she's asking about the um, um, entrance exams and selection. So how does it work? So you do assessment to understand the kid, but do you have like exams to accept or reject applications? How does it work no. with the selection process? No, we don't, have, we don't have exams to accept or reject. We are an inclusive school. The whole idea of online is that it, everybody is welcome. This is a school for everybody and it's about personalization. So, uh, you know, me and you, we can be very different, you know? So and we don't have to... Yeah, yeah, so, so it's not elitism, so it's not, you know, we only select the best of the best, it's more inclusive, but then customize and adjust to everybody's needs. Exactly, so we do five different assessments in the first two weeks, uh, not to uh, accept or reject you, but to personalize your learning objectives, so then, you know, depending on where you are, we chart the road. In a, um, uh, the second important thing is, or the third important thing is the holistic approach and the global learning and teamwork. So we create teams and then you could, we have offer a flexibility in that. Uh, you know, you can, um, uh, you create a team in one time zone, but you might work in another thing with a team in another time zone, depending on, depending on your interests. We are focusing a lot on something that nobody has done in the online, strange enough, that the digital environment is enjoyable. You know, it, it, it's kid friendly, it's, it's student friendly. Most of the, the LMSs are not always student friendly. And we're creating a platform where we're integrating over 50 different technology apps, uh, ed education technology apps, that would work uh, uh, together with each other. And then in the background, we generate data on the student learning, on the student engagement. And then whenever, as I said, you have uh, challenges, there are 24 seven tutors uh, there uh, for you uh, uh, to help. Just one second, okay. The core features of the business model, tuition, three tiers. Alexin, sorry, there's a question from, a, from a uh Gaurav Danji I want to ask a question uh, that how we are going to match timing for the online school as there is a huge difference in time zones in very in various countries so let me address it uh, um, uh, we we have taste uh, uh, this uh, right now in the in the in the pilot phase that we launch and uh, it was it, it, it's very simple if uh, for example here I mean in 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 Vasa in vast time zone, in its uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, my daughters could uh, uh, wake up very, very early and get involved in the late afternoon with activities with the uh, students uh, there in uh, Alestin's time zone in, U in Central Europe. But then if they prefer, they can get involved in some activities later in the evening uh, with some guys from Asia uh, uh, the next day. So. The, the whole idea is to give the students the freedom to join different sessions, uh, having students and having the possibility to join teachers from different time zones will allow us to have several times of uh, time zones of activities in which this, the students get, uh, can get enrolled in any of the, let's say their preference. So some online synchronous activities in which they can, let's say, put their, their, their uh, preferences, uh, interacting with teachers and with peers of other time zones, that means other countries, but while at the same time having the possibility to uh, explore 
uh, asynchronic uh, contents, let's say uh, videos, recorders, session, et cetera, et cetera, in which they can uh, put ahead. So it's a mix of different kind of strategies. I know Mike is probably would choose the European time zone so that they can sleep longer and then take the <laughs> classes with them. So, yeah. Exactly. Uh, there are, that's, uh, that's also another opportunity. So that e even if you miss you know, your morning class, there would be another group in the afternoon yeah, with yeah. European students that you would be able to attend. There was also a question, are the classes live or, or not? There is a combination of the live synchronous and asynchronous learning. There are some live classes, but not like in the school. For example, if you have seven hours of live classes in the school, you might have here two to three hours uh, per day of live and the rest is working on your assignment project. Uh, a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, interesting apps embedded into your learning that you would maybe play, maybe games that you would just want to, to play, but that uh, would help you uh, achieve the learning objectives and the learning standards that are, that are set from the beginning. The second one is a global teacher team. Uh, teachers from around uh, the globe. Uh, we have three different uh, categories, like rock star teachers, uh, like uh, good teachers, normal teachers. The rock star teachers, they do probably, you know, they would do less because they are mostly uh, more of a mentor teachers, helping other teachers as well as inspiring students. And then you will have your own teacher. And then the third one is the tutors, uh, those who would help you 24 seven. Uh, efficiency, lower costs by um, uh, we're trying to provide most of the back office operations from, from Pristina in terms of technology and, and support and those things, which would allow us to, to uh, decrease the cost of the studies because it's also important for us. Affordability is also important in this case. And then there are th several things that we're doing um, um, uh, in-house but not necessarily. Most of the uh, focus is on actually bringing together the best, what is out there, and focusing on pedagogy rather than on, on technology. Uh, just a second. A few clarifying okay. questions uh, that are coming here. Uh, so one language, so I assume it's all in English or, or are you offering different languages? At the moment, it will be only in English. Uh, in the third stage, when we enter country by country, then we would want to also offer in local languages when we become the online learning company. So the idea is that, you know, uh, at the third stage, we will be able to then go and whether create or acquire uh, local online schools. And then we would combine also the local curriculum there. And it might be that, you know, at least maybe 50% would be off, would be provided in the local language and then 50% English. We still want to keep the, the uh, I would say the global uh, element because this is very, very important. I think that, you know, for, for our students, even though they are in a, in a hub in Johannesburg, uh, they have their 50 other friends they also have friends in India. They also have friends in Colombia. They also have friends in Denmark. They also have friends, you know, from around the world that they, they will still continue to study uh, part of whatever they, they do uh, together with them. So the, the global element is, is important. And this is a kind of a market segmentation uh, that we have identified. Uh, maybe we would provide this. Uh, Carlos will be able to share this with you uh, in the, um, by, by email. I think it's important for the students to, to yeah, have this yeah, with yeah. them and just to yeah, see yeah. approximately, but obviously they will do their own market segmentation depending on, on where they're working on. These are the, the I would say, the, the products that we aim. Obviously not everything will uh, uh, start from the first year. So uh, uh, in the first year, we're focusing on uh, full uh, B2C, uh, you know, uh, enrolling, directly enrolling students for the full experience, as well as for a few courses that we're launching as individual courses. So you don't want to take the whole education, but you want to have one course or two with us, and then you're, you're able to do that. 
and so later on. Talking about uh, in terms of the uh, ages that you serve, so I see K-12, so does it mean that you have all of the classes from, from kindergarten to 12 or? Yes, yes. We will, we will be offering the whole spectrum from kindergarten to 12. So that's what, five years of age to 17 approximately, or what's the age range? Exactly. Five to, five to 17, five to 18 in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. The third product is um, uh, K-12 or school as a service. So then basically there are schools around the world who, uh, or there are entrepreneurs around the world, as we said, uh, they, they want to, you know, they would provide the hub, they would provide the location and we would provide the education. So then uh, this is what, what I've been uh, discussing until now. And the, and the fourth model is basically a franchise. So then, you know, we would franchise the, the, uh, the program, the model, and then the local entrepreneurs around the world, they might be able to run their own schools, but they will get from us the full education uh, package. Carlos, did you want to say something here? Yep, no, 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 no. I think you're, you're being clear. Okay, uh, so we're focusing on, you know, this is the, the, where we're adding innovation. This is why, you know, this is where I think the differentiation is in four different categories on technological innovation, product, income stream, as well as, as business model innovation. And these are the, the three uh, uh, stages of development that, that, that we have foreseen as a, in, in our growth plan. Um, the, the first one is 21, 23, uh, reaching 3,000 students. Uh, um, and then uh, 23, 24, uh, we will want to start with a expansion of hubs and working with, with uh, local schools. Uh, and then the third stage is uh, basically acquiring other uh, online schools around the world uh, and growing our footprint through acquisitions. And then when we acquire those schools, we get the best what it is from there in terms of local and then we provide our own. So then they become, we believe, much better uh, education providers than having to, uh, you know, then with the resources, with the local resources, that they that they have although this one i wouldn't i think uh, go into it because it's part of the challenge so uh perhaps uh, perhaps we would want to to skip into those and i will uh give the floor in a way to carlos to talk a little bit about the uh, the challenge that they have already received the students but just to to go through maybe if if if, if you agree with us of course, yeah. A few more questions about the model before we get into sure. what the students sure. should be working on. Um, so, um, one, uh, there are a couple of questions about the price. Um, have you decided on how much it will be? So, how costly is it? How affordable is it? Yes. So, basically, we have three different pricing. It's two ninety five, three ninety five, and four ninety five uh, euros in a way per month. Per month. Per month, but if you would pay for the full year, then you would get 30% discount. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, uh, we have the- We have said about 2000 to $4,000 a year. Exactly. So it would be around- standards, That's very cheap. I mean, private schools usually would be more like 10,000 and up. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. So exactly. Uh, it, it would be from 3000 to around 4500 dollars uh, per year depending on the on the uh, tier that that they are the country that that they come from um, and I, we think it's relatively affordable we are aiming to go down where we that's the, the thing we're trying to go down to around uh two thousand dollars per year uh especially to be able to cater to uh, a much larger audience uh, but you know that will come with 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 volume and with with time, mm -hmm. because we still want to provide a, a world class learning experience. Obviously, you can also charge five hundred dollars per year, but then uh, uh, you know there is a you say if you pay peanuts you get monkeys, and you know uh, there is uh, 
uh, you know, you have to cut corners somewhere. And in our case, we're trying not to do. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Another question, or we actually have several questions related to accreditation certification, um, recognizing the diploma. There is a question, for example, from um, Kushi Jane here. If I wanted to go to Harvard, Harvard, Cambridge, or Stanford, would they recognize your school? And Kushi, I don't think they would care that much. I mean, these kinds of schools, they usually don't really look at paper. They look at who you are as a person and what you know. So they wouldn't care where you graduated from. But perhaps maybe some uh, lower level universities that they have a checklist. And so they, they may be looking at whether or not it's a properly sort of accredited school. And so I'm curious how it would work with the global market with, you know, dozens countries you know, how would you, um, ha have you looked into all, of, all this business of accreditation? Yes, the business of accreditation is the ugly uh, business of, of accreditation, I would say, uh, um, because this is a very new thing, you know, uh, especially in the K-12, there hasn't been so much activity in terms of the online. Of course, universities are a whole different uh, segment and there has been for many, many years, uh, but not in the, in the K-12. What we're, uh, providing at the moment is we're providing Cambridge uh, A-level exams as exit certificates. So you would sit a Cambridge exam at the end of, of your uh, Cambridge A-level exam at the end of your education, which is accepted Harvard, Cambridge, or anywhere else in the world. And we're looking also at the accredited uh, uh, Pearson curriculum for U.S., so then when you graduate with those courses, you would be able to, um, you know, go anywhere at, at, at any university. So this is how we're tackling. And this is when I said you would, you can choose two different curriculums as you know, that you would follow. And then we would complement your learning experience with the seven transversal competencies and the, and the whole um, child education uh, approach. So then you would have the both of two worlds. You would still, have something that is recognized traditionally uh, from uh, universities, but at the same time, you know, you would develop skills that would help you in life, you know, not just to get a, to get a university uh, degree. And obviously after two years of operations, you're also eligible to get an institutional accreditation as an institution, but that's only after two years that you have been um, uh, fully operational. Yeah, and the logic probably is if it's good enough for Cambridge, it should be good enough for everyone, right? So um, there is another question related to price from Rabia here. Uh, so uh, she's saying that she's from Pakistan and in Pakistan, uh, good schools are 75 to 150 euros. So basically about a thousand to $2,000 a year. And so that brings me to the question of uh, different tuition for different countries. I mean, with a global school, it would be difficult, uh, you know, to differentiate, but at the same time, yes, we have Pakistan where maybe even $1,000 a year is too much. And the United States where even 10,000 is perfectly acceptable. So uh, are you thinking about maybe differentiating or offering some sort of stipends for kids maybe from developing countries or is there a way to, to address that without, you know, making some people jealous, so to speak? Yeah, no, we're definitely looking into that. But as I said at the moment, you know, we're looking at around $2,000 reducing the price for the, uh, uh, what we call the third, uh, first tier, sorry, pricing, because our first tier pricing is the lowest and the third tier is the, the, the highest. For the first tier, which Pakistan would fall into that category, for example. But uh, at the moment, VAS still, it's a work in progress for us uh, that we haven't been able to bring that down to that level. Uh, because of what we offer. And even in Pakistan, there, there are good local schools that they might be at this price, but uh, there are a lot of international schools that would charge 10, 15, even 20K per year. Uh, I know a lot of them, uh, even in Pakistan myself, that, that, that I have uh, um, uh, kind of contacts with. Carlos? Yeah, yeah, no, no I, I just, I just, I just um, let's say the, 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 the three uh, tire. Um, uh, pricing model, it, it, let's say, tries uh, to. It's an, it's a clear intention to 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 address this uh, this situation. 
of uh, global inequalities in, 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 in the acquisition power that people have. So that's why we, we define these the three, t three tires that recognize and are defined uh, uh, regarding the uh, GDP per capita each country has. So, so we have shared with Bas, and I think uh, Bas have, have, have shared with you uh, this, uh, this uh, table in which uh, we did this analysis and we uh, uh, define these three levels of of, uh, of pricing. Unfortunately, it's clear less. Like Alexin says, we 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 cannot uh, uh, let's say address every every country situation. So that's why, for example, in which in, in the in the in the in your challenge, you will have to do the analysis uh, regarding uh, at which specific segment in your country could apply um, a, a FSI goal because. Uh, for certain countries, uh, FSI could be uh, affordable for low-income segments in the in the in the population. Yeah, but for some others, it could even be out of the of the of the possibilities of high-income segments of, of the population. So let, uh, we we need to do the analysis, and you are going to find uh, different scenarios, and that's the kind of of thing you 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 should think. But when thinking in a global business, you should uh, you you should uh, you should think that uh, uh, this is a situation that it's going to be uh, you are going to face every day in every kind of industry. But keep in mind that uh, as you start, you need to define, let's say, some boundaries, and then when you have the way to scale up, as Alestin have uh, shown you, then you can start. Uh, 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 growing your target, uh, your market segments, and your and your targets. Uh, so, so that's the let's say uh, kind of precision that you have the challenge to help us to solve in different regions through your uh, uh, insight insights in, in the research of the regions that you focus on the in the analysis. Mm -hmm. I will say also that pricing is a challenge for exculture, and um, a couple of things that we learned is that. Uh, or, um, you know, that, uh, for example, that the development of the country doesn't always perfectly represent the income of the particular family. And so we've had many cases where the person would be, for example, from a devel so-called developing country, but the family is very well off. And so sometimes we have students, literally, like we had a few webinars where students would join from a personal limo. And then when they kind of, you know, show, like we had sessions where people show their houses, I mean, we had some kids from developing countries whose houses look like palaces. I mean, like I would be, and then vice versa, you look at the United States, for example, it's a country with a lot of uh, sort of economic disparities. And so you can have a person from the United States who perhaps will not be able to pay even $2,000 a year. So sometimes, you know, the country development is not a perfect indicator of the individual economic situation. So and I'm not sure how to address that. I mean, should it be adjusted in some way or not? Uh, no idea. Okay, so uh, Baz, uh, I don't know if you have, uh, if we have time and we address uh, very fast yeah, uh, let's, some yes, of the- Absolutely, let's go through the specific things that the students need to be working on to, to offer the most value to the company, if you can, a few minutes, uh, yeah, spend Okay, on. okay, so, so, so I understand that you have uh, already shared with them the, 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 the challenge uh, paper. Yeah. Uh, so let me highlight, uh, I think that it's very clear the way uh, X culture uh, structures the challenge for the for the uh, uh, students every, everywhere that they get involved. So this uh, first component of, of questions are regarded to market research and competition and uh, analysis. And uh, of course, we have a lot of insights. We have got a lot of information in these uh, recent uh, months. Uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, global education, global online, but it's still uh, uh, you should never stop uh, trying to understand what's happening in markets and what are the trends. So here are some very interesting and important questions for you to address uh, as best as possible. Uh, what could be the most pro uh, promising mar uh, market segment for, uh, for FSI in your country or your region? What is the most promising market? Uh, segment for FSI Go, and uh, uh, that is with countries or countries, uh, and what kind of customers are like to be more interested in F in the FSI uh, programs. I think that uh, we uh, we have touched uh, some of these uh, uh, examples: expats, uh, homeschoolers, families, 
uh, digital friendly families. So uh, let's try to get, go a little bit in depth in your region. How are these uh, uh, trends and um, demographics uh, moving on? Um, in case you focus in a, in a country, uh, uh, which regions, age and profiles could be the, the, the best uh, market selection? Then uh, parents and, and, um, and uh, the way uh, BAS has uh, structuring in, in the document, I think it's very interesting. If you have the chance, try to talk to parents, try to uh, understand what a school uh, they are attending, why are there a reason, and if they would consider to move in, in a, an online school the way we are uh, uh, proposing uh, in, the, in, the, in the value proposition that you have already heard. Uh, then then uh, a little bit about uh, what would be the main important uh, points that would make them take this decision of enrolling their children in FSI uh, gold for, uh, of course, the issue of the pricing is absolutely important as we have uh, recently talk, uh, talk about it. And uh, what would uh, seem more interesting in all these things that we have explained you about FSI gold, what uh, could be uh, perceived that as the most appealing uh, uh, facial. Teachers, very important. Uh, 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 there will be, let's say, also a process of of uh, uh, teacher, global teacher enrollment. So uh, it's very important to understand uh, uh, what could be the interest in some teachers will have to enroll in a school like FSI Go. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, what would be, let's say, the models to recruit, recruit them uh, and your recommendations in terms of uh, compensation policies, policies according your regions. As complex as it, is, it seems, and you, you have heard that the pricing model, it will be the compensation uh, model for teachers worldwide because also the compensation for teachers differs a lot uh, between countries. So, um, so insights regarding this, 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 uh, this component of, of teachers is uh, uh, extremely important in the business modeling of uh, this, uh, this, uh, this big expansion. Then also with the with the uh, related with the um, with the first component uh, you've received uh, market research and competition analysis. Uh, who are the most uh, the competitors of FSI going in the regions? How do they operate? You you are going to see that uh, probably in in not all the, you're going to find that in not all the countries is uh, let's say it's uh, 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 global uh, uh, online schools are are um, existing, are half a, a, half a participation, even could be uh, still not, uh, let's say, legally approved in the countries. There could be not a legal uh, framework to approve them. In some countries, you are going to see that, for example, homeschooling is forbidden. So uh, t uh, parents should mandatory send them uh, their parents to brick and mortar schools. So that, that's a big and a very important issue to, to, to keep in mind. We, we, we don't have any interest in breaking rules in, in, in anywhere and putting parents in, in difficult situation, of course. Uh, so that's, that, that you're going to see insights like this when you go in the research. There is not a global uh, framework regarding the legal issues of, of education. It differs in every uh, continent, in every country, uh, so you are, you are going to have, uh, and you are going to see that the kind of things that you have experienced in your own country are completely different in other countries as you take a look on, on this. And there's also a challenge. For example, things that so simple that like when the academic year starts, differs everywhere in the world. So uh, uh, many people from developed countries like the US or Europe has the understanding that everybody starts uh, a school in uh, in in fall in in, in <laughs> September, but but if you take a look, a uh, de uh, detailed look, you are going to see that uh, uh, almost every month of the year, some countries start the academic year. So more things to understand that uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, allows us to understand the kind of market selection that we can uh, have. Some things regarding uh, in-depth market analysis, uh, issues regarding cultural, legal, political, economic factors that uh, may, may uh, be important in terms of the behavior of the market entry. Very important to understand the concept of 
jobs to be done in your country. You remember the, this concept, jobs to be done are the kind of things uh, a customer wants the, the solution, the service, the product to solve in order to decide decide uh, buying it it's a very strong uh, concept related to innovation uh, it was uh, proposed by professor christensen from from harvard school and uh, and uh, for us he's, he's very important because because we are convinced that we need to really understand what are are the jobs to be done that parents and children are looking for everywhere. So it means getting in deep with this conversation and uh, insights on your uh, your different regions, the regions you select select to work uh, work on. Let's say uh, we have uh, talked to you a lot about about Finnish methodology, Finnish model, and uh, very important too. Let's say have some insights on how important is this. Finnish methodology approach important for them because probably we you, 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 we are going to find that uh, probably this mixture of British American models and even local model uh, could be even more appreciated by them. So we are pointing in FSI that yes we have a, we have a strong focus in Finnish methodology, but we want to recognize that there are very good things happening in education everywhere. So let's take a look. And let us know if you would suggest to, to, to give a little bit more of global uh, flavor in the in the kind of branding that you, we built for, for, for FSI Go. And of course, very important uh, to regard the things related to digital access. Uh, uh, of, this is a global uh, digital school and it's absolutely crucial to understand where things could work or not. We can, uh, let's say, we, we cannot promise that we are going to deliver the kind of learning experience we want to deliver if there is a very poor internet access uh, in the region we are we're turning. Clearly, clearly, this is a very uh, uh, important issue that should become part of the of the market segmentation. There, uh, yes, Bas. You know, I was just saying that yes, it is an issue, and uh, with Exculture, you know, we have quite a few countries participating in the project, and yes, the internet speed sometimes is an, is a problem for some participants, especially when they have to participate in live video streams. So sometimes that is a problem. Absolutely, absolutely. So now let me move to the next one, marketing. Uh, as you will see in in your document. Um, things about promotion channels, messages, promotional materials. I think there, these are self-explaining and you will see in your guidelines. Uh, we want to know uh, how to best approach uh, parents in order to uh, uh, let them, uh, make them aware of uh, FSI Go to, and to, let's say, go with them in this process of understanding in this uh, uh, user experience, experience this uh, this journey that parents uh, 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 should address in order to decide where they are going to enroll their their students. So very important. Uh, Carlos, just sorry for one second. Uh, Vas, I need to leave now, but Carlos will be here. Uh, I think uh, as long as it needed, right? Carlos, you don't have any anything in the next twenty minutes, right? Absolutely. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. It was great being uh, in this um, webinar, but it's even more exciting being part of the X culture, and we're looking forward to receiving some wonderful reports, as we did last time. Uh, last time we received, I think, close to um, close to uh, we had close to one thousand students, I think, working in our case. Yeah. So it was wonderful to see yeah, a large group. It was really, really high. So thank you, Vas, for the opportunity. Thank you for, for doing this, you know, for 10 years now, more than 10 years, actually, 11th year, you're already, I think, uh, uh, entering. And uh, you're still the same young guy <laughs> without a single uh, uh, silver hair like me. Oh, a little, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> That, that's quite an achievement. Yeah, we are on the same mission here. So yes, let's hope that the students will come up with many interesting ideas and then solutions. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Thank you so much. Have Thanks. a good day, everybody. Carlos, speak. Bye. Bye. Carlos, one
quick question here related to promotion. So do we understand correctly that you have this strange situation where the, the kid, the ch children are the recipients of the service, but the decision makers are somebody else. It's parents usually, right? So the marketing should be geared at, at, at parents, but the product should be designed for children. Is that correct? So you have this kind of interesting situation here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when, 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 uh, when, uh, Business modeling, uh, uh, we always need to, we need to recognize that we have a, a final consumer, a final, let's say, user, uh, which in the case of education is the, is the student, uh, but we have usually at the decision-making uh, consumer, let's say the, 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 the one that says, yes, this is the, the thing that I want to buy. And in education, those are parents, mainly in K-12. Probably in, 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 in higher education, uh, students take, uh, let's say, more important uh, uh, role, uh, but still parents are very important in, in the decision making. Uh, but definitely in K-12, uh, parents are the decision making. So uh, the decision makers are the ones that look for the solution, look for the school, uh, uh, do the screening, uh, and then they do the, the, the decision. And as, as as younger the, the, the child were mo most important the role of the, of the parents in the whole decision making. So that's why it's absolutely important to understand that uh, uh, you ha I'm, I'm quite sure that you are working in the concept of, of customer journeys. Uh, so the customer journey in, 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 in education involves both the journey of the parents and the journey of the students. And then it means that a good marketing strategy, marketing and sales strategy uh, in uh, uh, supposed to include both uh, both sides, but mainly parents who are the, the, the decision making. So here is the situation to map this, what they are looking for, messages, channels that we can address. And uh, well, uh, I think that you, you have proposed uh, BAS, uh, uh, even uh, developing a mock-up uh, locally tailor uh, marketing brochure uh, exactly. like that. Very, very, very interesting uh, approach. Third, part, th third component is, is the entry mode. And um, uh, well, of course we can, we, we, we are uh, starting in this process of direct sales, uh, let's say uh, doing through our marketing campaign and our sales pipeline and the recruitment team, etc. But very important is that we are uh, considering and we have even developed already some partnership with local partners that uh, are uh, supposed to do local promotion, uh, local uh, local sales, local process of recruitment, both of uh, of students and, and teachers, and to support FSI in that process. Uh, so so very interesting to know if this kind of local partner approach a, a, a is a reasonable for your the region you choose to analyze the country you you look to analyze uh, probably it, it could be uh, very 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 in, important to to recognize that and then uh, uh, well eventually uh, if we consider this and make it well let let's take a look on how is this who could be the partners that we can can uh, uh, look for in in your reason why, uh, what kind of experience they, they may have had and bring to the table in order to become this kind of uh, local partners. And then of course, a, well, there could be also a, post, uh, a, a chance to uh, look for entry models to certain countries in which local alliances, even on uh, we, uh, supposing an, an investment or participation in the local business may be a good idea. So then the, going that in deep, uh, trying to think uh, why would be reasonable to consider these, which kind of groups of investors would be uh, uh, the ones that you would recommend uh, in order to explore in, in these conversations. And then uh, the pricing, uh, I think we have talked about the, this very important issue of the pricing model and, uh, uh, and the, this is very important for us and, 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 and students uh, anything in the, what we do is, uh, let's say, it's, it's fixed, it's, it's written in rock, we say. It's, it's, uh, 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 everything is, is, has the possibility to be changed, to be re, uh, uh, redesigned, et cetera, et cetera. 
uh, we we want to keep always open to to innovation to improvement so if we you definitely consider that the three time tire uh, model that we uh, have uh, put in place and and we want to put in place is not the the, the proper uh, give your freedom to propose other models that could uh, work uh, better and of course finally this issue of certification in your local uh, markets in your local uh, uh, regions uh, this issue of is it decent common schooling an option it's even legal for parents in your your region uh, and uh, um, and uh, well the kind of of certificates that could count in in your region in order to understand as I told you regulatory issues uh, for, uh, have uh, have an immense di uh, diversity worldwide and uh, it would be, of course, a challenge to recognize how to accomplish all, all these issues uh, everywhere. So I think that's it, uh, um, Vas. So there let me know if yep. some some uh, additional question. Yep. So very informative. I, I really think you are onto something here, and I really think it could lead to some you know big changes in how education is delivered. So uh, let's see if the students will come up with interesting solutions and help you on this journey. So thank you so much. As always, we will manage the questions centrally. And if it's a question we can answer, we will not take your valuable time and we will handle them internally. But from time to time, new questions come that we have not answered yet. So in that case, we'll reach out to you to, to get more information. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. And yeah, talk to you soon. Bye -bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you.